Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and Psalm 89. Now, I'm at my desk here in Cape Town where I do a lot of my work. Very appropriate place to talk about idleness, to talk about laziness. That's what Paul's dealing with in 2 Thessalonians 3. As for other matters, brothers and sisters, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly. So he's saying that I'll be delivered from the attacks of people that are trying to stop me, that the work will carry on. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. So he's concerned about two things here. He's saying, I want to see that you know that God loves you and that you can persevere in Christ. So Jesus persevered. He went through the cross and uh, he he put up with a lot of nonsense. I pray that that perseverance is yours. And then this is his big issue. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer that is idle. Now, he goes on to describe what these idle believers look like. They're disruptive. They don't live according to what we've taught them. They eat other people's food and they sponge off other people without paying. They're unwilling to work. They're busy bodies. They're not busy. They're busy bodies. In other words, wanting to see what everybody else is doing, but not lifting a finger for themselves. Such people, we command and urge in the Lord Jesus, settle down and earn the food that they eat and warn them. And he says, don't eat even with them. Now he's saying not like 1 Corinthians chapter 5 when he says a believer is behaving sinfully. He says not that way. Remember, these guys are eating food that they've sponged off other people. Don't, don't become part of that. Don't, don't, don't do that. So Luke, the young guy, is asking us questions over these texts. says, what's the relationship between being idle and giving and receiving? That's his question. Because, because what happens is, is that Paul goes on to say, Follow my example. I was a worker. I wasn't a burden. I provided for my own food. And so he says, I was a giver, giver, giver. These idle peoples are takers, takers, takers. So Luke's absolutely right. Uh, if you're not idle, then you're a giving, generous person. If you are a busybody, idle, sponging of everybody else, you're just looking at what you can get. And, you know, I was thinking about this. A lot of young people these days, I've noticed, I don't know if it's a trait of Gen Z or, or the millennials, um, possibly haven't been taught to say thank you. I've been astonished at the number of people when you give them something. It's just like, yeah, that's I deserve that. Or, and not even a thank you. Uh, I think we should teach young people. I think we should teach everybody. Like what Paul is saying here, be grateful. Gratitude shapes your attitude. And that's something that I think we need to disciple our people in. Anyway, Psalm 89 uh, says, I will sing to the Lord for your great love. And then this is the way the psalmist approaches God. He says, you said, you said, I've made a covenant with my chosen one. I've sworn to David, my servant. I'll establish his line forever. I'll make the throne through a thousands of generations. So obviously we know that that was ultimately fulfilled through Jesus. Jesus coming from the lineage of David. But, but the psalmist goes to the Lord and says, you promised you would do this. You promised there would always be a king. He says, the heavens are yours. And then he says this, you righteous Lord. And righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. That's verse 14. Love and faithfulness go before you. You love us. You righteous. You just. And that's what you said. Blessed are those who've learned to claim and walk in the presence of the Lord. And then he says, once. Verse 19, you spoke in a vision to your faithful people. You said, I've bestowed strength on a warrior. I've raised up a young man from among the people. I found David, my servant, uh, with my sacred oil. I've anointed him. So in other words, you raised up David. And then it moves from David to David's successor in verse 27. And I will appoint him to be my firstborn, the most exalted among the kings of the earth. If they violate my, and so in other words, he's basically saying from the loins of David are coming someone who's going to govern the whole earth. But, but as for people, they've violated my commands. He says this, this is what God, he says, God says, 
If they violate my decrees and fail to keep my commands, I will punish their sin with a rod, their iniquity with flogging, but I will not take my love from him, nor will I ever betray my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or alter what my lips have uttered. In other words, I'm going to look after David and his descendants. And, and that's the prayer that the psalmist comes with. And we know that that was fulfilled in Jesus. But it's a wonderful model for praying, isn't it? That we say, God, you've said this, so I'm going to pray along this line. You've spoken this, so I'm going to believe this is what you're going to do. What's he said to you? What's he said over you and your family? That's the way we pray like the psalmist did.